Hello and welcome to today's video. Today's video is 31 Days of Halloween, Day 31, Mr. Hyde Squirrel. Before we get started, let's look at some artwork from some amazing artists. On our sculpture, so I'm starting off by making the eyes and I'm using translucent and pearl clay mixed together and I'm making a regular set of eyes and then a set that has a large eye and a small eye. I'm not for sure what I'm going to use yet, but I want to give myself some options. Then I'm going to go ahead and make the teeth. So I'm taking that translucent and pearl and mixing some yellow in there and then I'm just cutting off a bunch of little pieces of clay and then I'm rolling those out into my fangs. So I'm just going to do a bunch of these. I know I won't use all of these on the squirrel, squirrel, but I can have leftovers and use those for other monsters, maybe some new wonky weirdlings or whatever. So it's always better to have, you know, you want to have more than not enough. So this way I'll have plenty for the squirrel and for some other projects. Now with my paper full, I'll go ahead and move that over to the pan and I'll start making my candy corn. I wanted my little squirrel to have a piece of candy corn that's kind of gnawing on. So I started with the yellow, and then I'm just going to sculpt the orange middle, smooth that into the yellow. Now I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands, get that pigment off there, so I can do the little white tip of the candy corn. So I'm actually mixing some white with some translucent. Get that nice and soft, and then I'm going to go ahead and shape it out. So I cut off some excess, and then I'm just going to use my ball tool and smooth that in. Now I'm going to cut out a chunk of it, so it looks like the squirrel's been gnawing on it. And I went ahead and textured the piece I cut out just in case I wanted to use it later. So now I'm going to build up the squirrel body. So I'm just going to make a, I want to make him like a fat squirrel. So I'm just making a big ball out of the foil. And then I'm going to take some more foil and build up his tail. So I want it to look good against that body. I want it to be pretty good size, but like I said, since he's fat, proportionate wise, I want that body to actually be bigger than it you know, would be on a normal squirrel in scale with the tail. So now I'm just softening up some brown clay. I have some raw sienna here, so I'm just going to soften that up and cover the tail. And I want to get it really soft because I want it to be able to, you know, be able to texture it and have it, you know, the texture go in deep and just make it a lot easier to add the texture to it. So now I'm just using my ball tool and I'm just texturing the heck out of it. I want to make it look, you know, furry, but I want it to look like it's just a mess too. And I went ahead and added a wire to the ball for the base so I can stick that tail on there and give it some support. Then I softened up, softened up some more brown clay and then I'm texturing that for the body. This is just kind of that backside so I can attach that tail. And you see how much I, you know, pull off of that ball tool, just digging that into that clay to add that texture. Now, I was concerned that this tail is going to break off just because of how much weight it is. So I went ahead and added a wire and put that into the body. Now, I didn't have a lot of my raw sienna clay but, for my brown, but I did have other browns and I had some browns mixed up from some other things. So I'm going to make this squirrel kind of patchy, which actually works for his look. So I have a darker brown that I'm attaching the or going over the tail with. 
And now I'm just going to smooth that in and texture it so it looks like it's all one piece. So now I'm just going to finish texturing the tail and the back side of the body, get as much detail in there as I can. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bake this along with the eyes and the teeth and the candy corn according to package instructions. So now that that's baked and cooled down, you can see I've got some more clay here. I've got some beige clay that I'm going to mix some white in there with it. And I'm going to use that for the belly of my squirrel. So like I said, I was running a little bit low on some brown. And this will actually help me cover a lot of the squirrel with some lighter color and not use up my brown clay. And then I'm going to add a wire where I want his head to be. And now I'm going to texture the heck out of that front. So look at how deep that is. That's just tearing that up. And that's exactly the look I want for this guy. So now I've got another shade of brown that I'm going to soften up. Smooth it out some. Cut off some excess so it doesn't I don't use it up more than I need to. And then cover up that gap there on that squirrel. And then go back in and texture the heck out of it. I'm just going over it several times until I'm really happy with the look on it. Like I said, he, he's fur, but I want it to be very wild. You know, this is this is a Mr. Hyde squirrel. It's not a normal squirrel. Now I want to go ahead and I'm taking some more darker brown clay. I'm going to make his legs. So what I'm going to do is take a couple of balls of clay. And I'm going to press them out into these, you know, almost circles. And then I want it to be pressed against the ground so it's nice and flat on the bottom. And then I will attach it to each side. And then I'm going to use my little ball tool to kind of smooth it in to the body. And a little bit of stuff on the bottom I want to clean off that I notice. And then I'm going back to the legs and just adding a lot of texture to them. And then I'm going to want to add the feet, add the texture to that. And I'm going to start doing the arms. So I want to use my candy corn um, as a reference of how I want to place these so they're kind of holding it. Now I took some liquid clay, pressed that against the belly to hold that candy corn in place. Now I'm going to go in and texture those arms and smooth those in so they look like they're all one piece. Now once I get the texturing done here, I'm going to go ahead and bake this according to package instructions. That way I've got this body all done and don't have to worry about distorting it as I'm working on the head. So I've let the body cool and I'm going to start sculpting the head out of some foil. Get it at roughly about the size I want. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to build it up with some more clay so that'll thicken up that piece. Now I'm just mixing up some more, you know, a different shade of brown and getting it nice and soft so it's easy to texture. Covering that entire uh, foil head. Now I'm going to cut out the area for the mouth. So I'm going to go ahead and add some darker clay in there behind where I'm going to put the teeth. And this is going to be a lot thinner because I want that, you know, the brown to stick out more. But I needed something for the background because you don't want to just have foil back behind those teeth if there's going to be any kind of gaps. Now I'm using my ball tool to add some sockets for the eyes. I went with the largest eye and one of the medium eyes. So now I'm adding all the teeth, or you know, filling his mouth full of teeth. I'm not going to use all of them that I made. Adjusting them a little bit here and there. I don't mind if they're covered up some by the lips, but I do want as much you know exposed as I can so he just looks, has this gnarly look to his face. Then I went ahead and added some more clay to cover up the tops of like what would be the roots of the teeth for his you know like kind of a lip area, and then I want to do the same thing for the lower area. And smooth that in with my ball tool. Add a little bit of texture around it. Make sure everything looks okay. Smooth it out. Now I want to go ahead and adjust some of these teeth with my X-Acto knife and needle tool. Added some liquid uh, clay on the top there to push that head in there to hold that in place. And now I can add his ears. So I wanted to get it on that body so I wasn't going to distort it anymore. And I know I can always hold that body since it's all baked and I don't have to worry about messing up that part of the sculpture. So I'm working on his ears, getting those smoothed into place, adding more texture. Making this guy just look all, all wicked. Kind of a wild, crazy squirrel. I'm going to build up his nose. And then I'm going to build up some clay around his nose and give him that kind of 
muzzle look and bring up his kind of the bridge of the nose area so it didn't have that angled gap that I was kind of getting if I just laid that just the nose on there so I'm using my ball tool to texture it going in adding some indentions kind of like where like these whiskers would be but I didn't do any whiskers on this guy um, and I'm just gonna go through keep adding or working on the texture until I'm really happy with it Wanted to make sure to take my time and get this piece exactly how I wanted it. So see a lot of that excess coming off. I'm really digging in deep there. I'm just adjusting some of the teeth. Wanted to make sure as much of them were, you know, shown as possible. Just getting the nice, nice evil grin of this guy that just stole this piece of candy corn. He's just like, Arr! you know, eating it all. He's, he's kind of wild. I don't know if it's from the sugar or what, but. All right, so I think I'm pretty happy with this sculpt. I'm going to go ahead and bake this according to package instructions. All right, so I've let the sculpture cool down. He's all done. I'm really happy how he looks, but I want to add some gloss to him. So I'm using some Sculpey gloss, mix it up a little bit with my brush, and then I'm just using a small brush, and I want to gloss those eyes. So those eyes are this, you know, like I said, they're a translucent and a pearl mixture, so they already have a you know kind of pop. But once you have that gloss coat, that really makes them shine. So I think it has a really good look. I did have a little bit of extra brown clay that, get up, that got on the eyes. So I cleaned that off with the X-Acto knife. Went back in. Had the same issue here, so I'll clean that off. I'll go in with my small brush and just keep adding some gloss till I get that eye completely covered. So it should not look nice and shiny when my little Mr. Hyde squirrel is all done. Now that I'm happy with how the eyes look, I'm using my bigger brush, and I am just gooping it onto his mouth. I want this stuff to drip out. Now, I did have a problem where I lost one of his teeth right there. Um, it just wasn't pushed in far enough when he baked. I could glue that back in place, but I kind of liked the gap that it gave him. It kind of you know, made him look even more messed up, I guess. So I'm going to go ahead and gloss his candy corn. And like I said, I'm just gooping this on because I want it to drip. Normally, you know, if you're glossing something, you want it to gloss just to stay right where you're at, especially if you're not glossing the whole piece. But for this guy, I wanted it to look like slobber, this, you know, saliva from this squirrel. So I'm just gooping it on there and just keep going over it. And then I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to set it down let it dry for a while. Once this guy has dried for a while, like I said, I'll let it sit for a few hours and then we'll take a look at the final Mr. Hyde squirrel. And here is the finished Mr. Hyde Squirrel, made out of polymer clay. So this is my final video for my 31 days of Halloween, and I'm really, 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 really happy how this guy turned out. I think he's it was a perfect fit for the final video. So I'll go ahead and move this guy a little bit closer, let you look at some different angles, get a better look at that gloss so that gloss in his mouth isn't completely dry most of it everywhere else is so that will probably dry a little bit more and be a little bit more translucent not as opaque as it is gooped up in there but i think it looks great i love how slimy his mouth looks and how shiny his eyes are just such a such a fun piece to do and you can even see the shine on his nose there where i added some gloss i don't know if i Mentioned that during the glossing segment, but I did do that too. You can see his texture in his tail and his body. Good look at this guy. I'm really happy how the candy corn turned out. It's a little bit bigger than a normal piece of candy corn, but we'll take another look, close up look at those fangs. You can see how shiny and how they angle out. You can look at his nostrils there. And the texture on the front of his face. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed the 31 days of Halloween. If you haven't watched all of my Halloween videos, I greatly appreciate it if you check them out or most of them. There is a playlist down below. Also, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel and ring that little notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and thanks to all of you that have checked out all of my Halloween videos. You guys are awesome. Thank you, and remember, never stop creating. Bye!